I'm almost done with my daughter's nursery. There's just one more thing I wanna make and that's a headboard for the bed that we have sitting in her room. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Basically, we're going to multiply this times nine to make a channel tufted headboard. And I'm gonna cover it all in this blue velvet. It's gonna be awesome. My headboard is gonna be 60 inches tall, so I need nine planks that are 60 inches in length. So what I did was use a half sheet of plywood and I created a diagram below so you can see how I made all my cuts. But basically, I got six full pieces and then I need to piece together three of them. So that's what I'm doing here. So that you just have to buy one sheet of plywood, so super economical. But this is how sturdy it is once it's done. So it's like, it's a solid board. So no problem once we get it all covered in our blue velvet. So the two things you need to make a headboard fluffy are foam and batting. So instead of using foam, which traditionally can be expensive, I'm using a mattress topper. I think I ordered a queen size. So we'll cut that to the same length and width as each plank, and then we'll cover it all in batting. And this is typically found like inside of a quilt but it helps smooth everything out and gets rid of all the bumps and wrinkles. Okay, to get all of our planks assembled, we lay down our batting, which is actually cut a few inches wider than everything else because it'll be folded over onto the back. Then we put our foam and you wanna put it ridges side up and kind of center it in the batting. And they kind of stick together, which is nice. Then we'll put our plank on top. And now we're ready for a staple gun with three eight inch staples. This is similar to how I assembled the cornice board that went over my daughter's bedroom windows. And it's how you would make like a bench, a reupholster a bench seat. It's a very handy skill to know people. You also want to do your staples parallel to the edge of the board so that it, the batting doesn't pull away and tear with a perpendicular staple. Dun, 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 dun. This fabric is so fun. So this is actually the perfect width of fabric that I don't have I only have to make one cut per plank. So just like the batting had a few extra inches, the fabric will need a few extra inches as well. Can she make it? Nope. Now I'm ready to put it all together. So I'm gonna put them face down, side by side, make sure they're nice and square, and then attach them with just some scrap boards that I have. My kids helped me do some of the preliminary work on this, and so I let them sign the back of it so we can remember that they helped. Woo, I almost needed a bigger table. I'm gonna start by putting one screw in each board to get everything set, and then I'll go back and add a second screw so that each plank has two screws. I'm so excited to move this into the room. The last thing I need to do is attach some legs to the bottom of it, but this thing is already big enough to transport as is. So I'm gonna do this in the room, in place, but I just wanted to show you that it's gonna go on the back and it's gonna hold it up at the right level above the mattress. Well, it definitely makes a statement like I wanted and covers up the entire window so I don't have to worry about hanging curtains on this side of the room. And I'm so excited to get some shut eye in here and rest up with my new baby girl. But the next time you see me, I'll be a little skinnier and probably a little bit more tired, but that's okay. It's all totally worth it. Thanks so much for checking in.